everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Vollzeit Traum. My guest today is Sao Mai, a young Austrian influencer who vlogs about travel, food, and is raising awareness on a very sensitive topic, eating disorder. As content creator, one viral video is enough to raise your following, and exactly that happened to my guest, Sao Mai. Let's start with your vacation in town of Brsec. You got an apartment for around 80 euros and that wasn't really in best shape. Bed and kitchen were in the one room. Did your apartment look like on the photos? Let me be completely honest. Um, we looked, it, it was a little bit deceiving on booking.com, but I found out later that it was because of the agency that put the <laughs> apartment on there. Like the owners had nothing to do with whatever was put on booking.com. And actually the owners were such friendly people. Like when we came there, we were actually so surprised that we saw the apartment in that shape for that price because the people didn't seem like somebody who would love to steal from tourists, you know what I mean? Like scammers. They were actually very friendly, very nice. And then they actually explained it to us that they put their apartment on booking.com through an agency. That's why their commission, they have to pay an extra commission to the agency. That's why the price is a little bit higher. To make the price more bearable, the landlords did offer you to stay free of charge. Exactly. We had such an amazing time with them. We actually spent the time on the terrace with them. They were telling us their stories about their life and actually how they built the whole community around the beach. So actually, I have so much respect and admiration for those like really kind people. And they offered us the next day for free because there were no bookings. They were like, oh, do you want to stay for free for the next day? But we unfortunately had to leave back to Rovin. So we couldn't, but they did. So that's how amazing and friendly those people are. That's why I felt so, so sorry that the story got misinterpreted in such a bad way. Let me tell you, I did not expect the media to ever pick up on any of my videos, especially not this one, because what my goal was with that video is to just show people that spontaneous ideas actually lead to the best memories. But it was my stupid mistake that I, you know, filmed it in a way that put such a bad light on the owners. I made a new video. I apologized. I tried to clarify my point and everything because I did not mean to harm anybody in any way. At one point, you actually decided to spend the night on the beach because you liked it so yes. much. <laughs> that is, yeah. Like I said, the media misinterpreted in the way that I was actually protesting the, the, the apartment that I saw that it was like not in the greatest shape. I thought it was like disgusting. That's what they said in the media. But actually, if you saw more of my videos, you know my personality. Like I'm a very like, I guess, spontaneous and adventurous person. And I always come up with like crazy, stupid ideas to make my life a little bit better. So I would have done it anyway. Let me tell you, I would have done it anyway. I would have gone to the beach and slept <laughs> under the stars anyway. But that night it was just like perfect. It was full moon as well. And I always wanted to sleep on the beach under the stars. Like, who wouldn't want to, obviously, right? <laughs> and I was there with a friend, too. So it was, like, less dangerous. And I felt, like, very safe. I mean, the beach was empty in Brzec. I mean, Croats are, it's, it's a safe place. On your TikTok stories, I noticed you visited many cities along the Croatian coastline. Which city made the most impression on you? I mean, I came there to Rovin, and this Brzec, um, trip was very spontaneous. We decided from one day to the other. Maybe that's why the prices was, the price was also a little bit higher. But we stopped in Blomin and then in Labin, right? Labin. I, I think so. <laughs> Labin. Is it, is it Labin? I think so. I think it's Labin. Yeah, yeah. And then also, and like I mean, in Blomin. That's like such an amazing like panorama view. If you've never been, you have to go. It's like beach on the left side and then you have this like giant tower and then the mountains on the right side. It's like fucking beautiful. And then, <laughs> and then Lavin there, I had the best ice cream I've ever had. Let me tell you, it's called, it's called the Cafe Velo or something. Amazing ice cream. And then I also saw Pula and that's in like a gorgeous place. I don't know if you've been, but the architecture there, the amphitheater, it's gorgeous. I mean, like, Croatia has so many hidden gems that I've never known about or never even heard about, but it's just gorgeous. Like, Was that your first time? It was my second time. I was there the first time with my class in 2016, I think, but we were in split. 
over some else. You also tried Croatian snacks with your brother. Which one is your favorite? My favorite is Napolitanka. Like, I think so, for sure. Or Linolada. That's amazing, with, with banana. That's like the best thing ever. Yeah, my brother loves Bananko. I have to say sorry, but I hate it. <laughs> we have a similar thing in the Czech Republic, and I always hated it. But Napolitanka is great. No, Strudla. Strudla is great. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite, yeah. That's my favorite. In your videos, you often show what you eat in a day while traveling, and particularly in one of those, you're bragging about burek. Uh, what was your favorite food in Croatia? I love burek. It's, it's so great. And I apologize for saying burek with meat, because <laughs> apparently that's politically incorrect. <laughs> that burek is always with meat. Sirinica is burek with, or burek with cheese. So I'm very sorry about that. I apologize to all Croatians. <laughs> but did you like the one, one more with meat or the one I like more with cheese? The meat more. Yeah, I, I got it from Mlinar and it was really good. It was really, really good. <laughs> On TikTok, you have more than 220,000 followers with 6.2 million likes, whereas on Instagram you have 12.5 thousand followers, which is a lot. Do you consider yourself as an influencer? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't, because I feel like influencers, I guess like the job description is that you get paid for that, I guess, or that you call it your actual job. I don't get paid for anything. I just started making videos to inspire people to live their best life because I started sharing my story about my recovery from my eating disorder and my other personal issues with the goal to you know, inspire people that could relate to the negativity in my life. And we're basically trying to recover from it together. Like it's, it helps a lot not being alone and having other people you know, supporting you every day because I film what I eat every single day. And all the comments and all the private messages that I get, they're always like very supportive and I'm happy that I can help them in their journey. And how many messages do you get per day? A lot. And I try to answer all of them because they're very personal. Because I share such a vulnerable topic or like honest topic with the world, I manage to create a very like strong connection with my people like my friends I guess I could call them my friends because I basically share such a you know sensitive topic with them so I trust them but a lot and it makes me very sorry to actually get so many messages because it's sad that people have to you know go through such a bad thing especially young girls like I get messages from 13 year olds saying that they struggle with their body and that they hate their life and that they don't know what to do with their life anymore and how to deal with the eating disorder and you know it's just sad <laughs> because their life just began and if all they can think about is food and the pressure from the society to look a certain way it's it's not what life is about that's why i make these videos to show them like oh my gosh traveling that's what life is about exploring new things having fun sleeping on the beach <laughs> You have a very interesting quote in the description of your social media accounts. Do you mind sharing it with um, us? Somehow it just popped up into my mind in the first video that I made ever, which was on, on YouTube, which was my eating disorder story. And I just said that and then I actually thought about it. It makes so much sense because first of all, it means like don't waste your life, you know. Uh, life, you only live once, YOLO, I guess. <laughs> and you should just live your life to the fullest. But also it means waste away. Then I googled what waste away means. It actually means like get very skinny until you like disappear basically. And I didn't know that before I said it. So it actually makes so much sense in my opinion from, with my story. You yourself have a eating disorder. What are you doing to make your personal life better? Um, I, well, first of all, I study here at the Wirtschaftsuniversität. And otherwise, I try to spend the most time I can with my brother and my friends because I wasted a lot of time <laughs> before uh, thinking about other irrelevant stuff like you know food and body image and stuff. So I try to basically compensate for that time now and also just traveling a lot because that makes me happy. And that is, I guess, what 
what drives me forward in life to just explore new things, places. I also go to events and get to know more people, try to see what life is about, you know, open my mind just so it's not stuck in this eating disorder world or depression, I guess, or negativity that people can get stuck in if they don't see or if they don't open their eyes to the world. Do you monetize your platforms? And if not, so why? Um, one reason is that I speak about such a sensitive topic, YouTube demonetizes it automatically. So even if I wanted to, I can't. And TikTok doesn't pay money. And also, I got a bunch of requests for collaborations with a bunch of brands. And most of them are very, I would say, they do not fit my message. <laughs> so for example, like diet teas or diet you know, food and I don't know, like waste trainers. <laughs> it's, it's not what I want to promote because it's stupid. Honestly, it's fucking stupid. So <laughs> I'm not going to work with brands that I don't believe in. So if somebody, you know, if somebody reaches out and wants to promote their thing that actually helps people, then of course I'm going to help them. I'm going to take my platform that I have that I'm very grateful for. I know that I have this platform. I'm grateful for it. I will use it to promote good stuff. When was the moment that your social media accounts went viral? Because, I mean, more than 200,000 followers on TikTok is really a lot. And, uh, I mean, I, myself on TikTok, have only six followers. <laughs> I will be the seventh. You have to tell you me later. Seven, I will yeah. be the seventh. And I will get you more. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's so hard to get new followers. So how do you get new followers? So I started filming videos about what I eat every single day. And somehow that picked up. But what actually blew up was surprising. It was a video that I made in Vietnamese. So actually most of my followers are from Vietnam. But now I got more followers from Croatia because something else blew up. But the algorithm on TikTok is actually really funny. Like it's, it's very random. So you never know what can blow up. But I was lucky enough to, you know, get this platform until now. Your vlogs are mostly about food and travel. Who are you trying to reach with your posts? Well, I'm mostly, yes, about food and travel, but also life in general. I think this was the first time I actually traveled on TikTok. So before that, because Corona, I couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> so I was stuck here the whole time. No, uh, before that, I really made a lot of videos about my eating disorder and the way I cope with life or like fun stuff too, like random things that I do during the day. But I just want to, I guess, normal people, like everybody that can relate to normal life because I'm living kind of a normal life and I'm trying to make the best out of the life that I am given. So I guess I just want to inspire everybody, I guess, to make the best out of their life, not to waste their life away. Yeah. <laughs> what are your plans for the future? I, I guess I have many ideas that I would like to implement that I don't really have much time for yet, but I would love to. Um, for example, I have this idea of an app, kind of like Facebook, but it would help people to deal with their mental health issues or eating disorder. For example, like to be able to connect with other people that share the same story or struggle with the same thing because I get so many messages every day, you know? Everybody's saying like, oh, you make me feel like I'm not alone. But the thing is like, they're not alone. Everybody or like the majority of people that follow me are struggling with the same thing. So I would love to have this platform where people can just be, you know, open about it and help each other, actually support each other. Where do most of your followers come from? So now when I see it's a lot of Vietnam because of that, I made actually three videos in Vietnamese that blew up. So a lot of them in Vietnam, but the next is the USA. But here we don't know if TikTok is going to get banned in the USA, so that's going to be a big issue as well. But then I have Austria, Germany, and I think Croatia is there somewhere for sure. <laughs> is this something you would like to continue doing until the rest of your life? Well, I hope I won't have my eating disorder for the rest of my life. But honestly, I've been trying to move away from that topic a bit more because, as I said, it reminds me a lot that... I have an issue and I guess I have to deal with my issue first before helping others, I guess. But of course I'm going to be there always for everybody that needs help. But I would love to do more of this 
traveling and like sharing normal things in life, being grateful for little things in life, like having great sun today, and not just uh, being stuck in a hell hole, basically. Yeah, I would love to like inspire people to live their best life. Thank you so much for this interview and thank you for sharing your story. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. You too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you.